Hey, Dr. Rick Wallace, the following segment is brought to you by Inbox Dollars. Inbox Dollars is actually something that I used a long time ago when things got really hectic and I needed some income to steady me until I recovered and got some things done. Uh, you're not going to get rich by it, but if you're looking to make some extra money, Inbox Dollars is exactly what you need to check out. Look, you can get paid for taking surveys, opening emails. Uh, and a bunch of other different things. The link to find out how you can do all of this is in the box. It's free to find out, free to sign up. Check it out. I'm out of here. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody has had an unbelievable weekend. I hope that you had a great week last week. Uh, no matter what happened, remember what I always tell you, no matter where you're at, no matter what's going on, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. So that means that uh, you still have the opportunity to go out and make this week an unbelievable week, a great week. And even if last week was, a, was an awesome week, your goal should always be to improve. Your goal should always be to elevate. And so you should be looking for this week to be a better week than last week, no matter what last week brought to you. So I am challenging everyone to go out this week and make things happen. Uh, now, definitely um, this uh, particular morning motivational session is brought to you by uh, yours truly, actually, the uh, Breaking the Curse of Procrastination uh, course. So if you are looking to actually break the course of procrastination, uh, the link is in there for the course working with yours truly. So that's that. Look, this first segment this morning, there are going to be a number of different segments we're doing every day. We have changed up the format. We're going to be putting a lot of content out over the next 90 days. We want to close the year strong. We want to empower people to move into the new year. Uh, with high expectations, with a plan, with a purpose, with focus, and an elevated way of thinking. And so we're going to be flooding uh, social media platforms across the spectrum. Uh, got uh, I'm streaming right now on about five different platforms. So we're going to keep these things coming out during the day. They're going to be different topics, different subjects. Uh, sometimes it's going to be relationships. Sometimes it's going to be money. Sometimes it's going to be business. But it's always going to be about improving yourself. And you want to be balanced. You want to be improved improving yourself and growing intentionally in all areas and facets of your life. So we're going to be doing that now here for this first uh, segment this morning. Look, everybody's heard of the glass ceiling. You've heard of it. If you haven't heard of it, the glass ceiling is used to sort of define this place where you're at in your life, normally in your career or on your job, but it exists in every area. It's this thing where you are existing and there's something that's stopping you from going up. And here's the reason they call it the glass ceiling and not simply the ceiling. See, the glass ceiling infers that I can see through it. And because I can see through it, I can see what I want to become. I can see the things I desire in life. I can see the marriage that I want. I can see the businesses that I want to create. I can see the ultimate outcome of my finances being where I want them to be. I can see these awesome ways that I will impact the world. But the word that's the word glass. So the glass infers that I can see beyond the obstacle. Ceiling refers to or implies that there is an obstacle, that there is a barrier blocking you and that you can see through it. Now, the other reason it's called the glass ceiling is, okay, the first reason is that it can you can see through it. The second reason is that you can break through it. Now, that's where most people balk is the idea of breaking through the glass, because despite all of what you see in the movies about people crashing through glass windows and rolling and jumping up and keep running and all that stuff, we know that that's not how it really happens. Normally, if you go crash through a window, you're going to get cut up. Uh, you could get a big piece of ice and you could even cut a major artery 
and have a problem where you're it's a life-threatening injury jumping through glass that's the reality of it that's the non-movie version of it is that jumping through glass is dangerous it's painful so what happens most people see the glass ceiling see all of the beautiful things that are on the other side of the glass problem is they don't want to endure the pain. They don't want to take the risk. Let me explain something to you. I'll be totally honest with you. I'm be upfront. I'm not going to be like a lot of people that float around and talk and say they know it all. First of all, I don't know it all. I wake up every day looking to learn, but I've been doing this stuff for over 30 years. So that's a lot of stuff I do know. That's a lot of stuff I experience. A lot of it is coming from study, but most of it is because I've lived it. I've lived the things I'm talking about, the principles that I push. I've lived them. They've gotten me far. They've brought me through some difficult moments. But let me tell you something. If you don't prepare for pain, there will be no experiencing of anything exceptional, extraordinary, phenomenal. Why? Because everything phenomenal and exceptional is on the other side of pain, on the other side of fear, on the other side of uncertainty. You've got to be willing to wake up in the morning and sit up and say, you know what? I'm putting on the big shoes. I'm girding up and I'm going to go out and I'm going to make something happen today. You're going to be have to you're going to have to be willing to move on the other side of the difficult moments. You're going to have to be willing to move on the other side of what you fear. You're going to have to face down some things. See, everybody in this world has been trained almost to stay inside of the box. Why? Because the box is safe. The box is the confines that produce average and mediocrity. Average has become an acceptable word. Average is no longer something that people hear about themselves and determine that they're uh, that they're unhappy with themselves and that they're rising if someone ever refers to me as average in anything it's a cue to me to step up it's a cue to me to reinvest myself it's a cue to me that i'm not where i should be i don't partake in things just to be average if i decide i'm going to do something i want to become if more than just proficient at it i want to become excellent at it. I want to be declared an expert in it. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to invest myself in knowing not, there's no such thing as novel to me. I don't have time in this world to participate in novel ideas or novel participations. If I'm going to do it, I want to do it well. Even if it's going to be something I'm going to do for fun, I want to be good at it. I don't just want to be average. That's got to be a mindset. But that the, the thing is now average and mediocrity is the default. It's where people are. So everybody sit up and sits up and does what everybody else does and gets what everybody else gets. And now the whole freaking world is unhappy. 85% of Americans wake up every morning and go to a job that they don't like. 85% of Americans wake up every morning and report to a job they don't like to work around people they can't stand. And they literally are digging an early grade. Literally, first and foremost, you're committing spiritual suicide. But what do you mean by spiritual suicide? So that's something that's planted inside of you from birth. It's your purpose. It's something that's internally inside of you. It thrives. But over time, if you don't have someone to flame, fan your flames, if you don't know how to fan your own flames, if you don't know how to feed the thirst of your purpose, you will sit up and you'll starve it and you will dehydrate it and it will shrink, it will shrink back. And the thing is, that thing inside of you is yearning something. And every time you sit up and you do something that doesn't feed it, you're starving it. So you're literally slowly committing spiritual suicide. But check this out. You're also committing, slowly committing uh, literal uh, physical suicide. What are you talking about? When you wake up every morning and report to a job you don't like, it's a stressful situation. You have a stress response in your body that will release cortisol into your bloodstream, adrenaline into your bloodstream. You literally are in a heightened state of stress. Every morning you report to work, what happens? Cortisol in the body for a short period of time, a couple of minutes here, a couple of minutes there to deal with stressful situations like maybe you uh, are stepping out into the street and a car is coming and you see it and you need a quick response. That stress response happens when when you get out of harm's way, that stress response uh, dissip dis dissipates. Cortisol starts to leave the bloodstream. Adrenaline starts to leave the bloodstream. Heart rate starts to drop. You go back to normal. What happens when uh, your car that's about to hit you is your boss? And you've got to see them eight, eight hours a day. What happens if that car is the person that sits next to you at work all day long? What happens if that car is the idea that I'm never going to ever have what I really want to have? Now, that cortisol in your bloodstream 
now over a prolonged period of time is referred to chronic stress. Chronic stress attacks the organs. Chronic, stre chronic stress leads to cardiovascular disease. Chronic stress leads to a, a hypertension. Chronic stress leads to a higher risk of stroke. Do you see where I'm going with this? Not only are you killing yourself spiritually, you're killing yourself physically because you refuse to step out because you see the physical threat to you in an emotional sense. Man, if I go out here and try this and I fail, what if I go out here and people talk about me? What if I go out here and I don't have a clue what I'm doing? In order to do something new, you're going to be in this position at some point where you don't know what you're going to do. Everything that I've ever gotten into for the first time, I didn't know how to do it. I just made up in my mind that it was okay to be the small fish in the room. It was okay to be the person who knew the least in the room. See, a lot of us have gotten uh, fallen in love with the idea that we're the best at what we do, even though we're not really truly being appreciated for it. We're not truly, really true in being compensated for it, but we are known for doing what we're doing we're, and we're comfortable in it because we have some kind of recognition. Recognition without compensation means absolutely nothing. So many of us have gotten our ego stroked and that's all we get paid with is our ego stroke. So the boss knows how to tell you how, what, of an, what an awesome job you've done without ever compensating you what you truly should be compensated for. See, to me, people talk about being on the plantation. I don't necessarily talk about being on the plantation because if you have a job that's paying you well to do something you absolutely love, then that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you have the freedom and you have a plan of how you're going to, at some point, create a reality in which you are self-sufficient. You can never be dependent on someone else for your complete livelihood because they could check out even if they mean the best for you. What happens if something happens to them? You've always got to have a plan. But at the end of the day, my problem isn't with people who have, my problem is you're sitting there and you're miserable. My problem is you're sitting there and literally watching the life drain out of you. My thing is you need to step up and know your worth. You need to know the value of what you bring to the table. And when you bring it to the table, you have to demand compensation for it. You've got to stop accepting low pay. Stop accepting mis being mistreated. Stop accepting being dominated. You bring the value to the company. If not, they wouldn't hire you and wouldn't pay you. You got to know your value. No matter where you work, you have a certain value. Now, obviously, the more unique your skills, the more unique your expertise, the greater value you bring and the, the, uh, the more you can demand, but you need to know. Now, the thing about owning your own is you get out and you create it. Every day you wake up and you go to work for you. Every day you wake up and the focus is your dream, not someone else's. But you got to start somewhere. So my thing is wake up and know what you're doing. The reason that most people never break through the glass ceiling is they don't want to get cut. Oh, but you're going to get cut in this life if you want anything worth having. There's a thing you're going to have to become aware of and accustomed to, and that's risk. You don't get the great things without taking risks. You don't get the things that are remarkable, exceptional, extraordinary, and phenomenal without taking risk. You're going to have to take risk. It's real simple. The thing is, what you've got to understand, and here's the thing I can tell you with 100% certainty, is that when you take the risk and you get cut, and you get bloodied up and, and, and you go through these difficult and uncomfortable moments. What I can tell you is the reward always outweighs the pain. I can tell you that from 30 plus years of experience as an adult, I can tell you that even as a teenager, some of the things I pursued that most teenagers weren't even uh, considering that the end result justified the difficult moments. What I'm trying to tell you is if you want something great, you're going to have to go through some difficult difficult times and different, but you've got to be scared with anybody because you don't want anybody to laugh at you, but you see it and you see yourself doing some things that nobody else can see you do. That's all. The only person has to see it is you. It's your vision. It's your dream, but you're going to have to act on it. You're going to have to move beyond that ceiling because that ceiling will keep you right there serving everything except your purpose. There's nothing wrong with serving other people. That's the beauty of this life. You get to serve people. But when you're serving people in your purpose, you're rewarded in your service. You're not taken advantage of or exploited in your service. You got to know it. And, 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 and this thing is God's planted something in you. God has planted something in you. Whether you know it or not, and however you see God is your business, but God has planted something in you. You know when you're being handled. You know when it's not fulfilling. You are doing it because you feel you have to. Well, hell yeah, you got bills to pay. I get that. But I'm telling you that there's a way to pay the bills and live. 
See, most of us are just existing. Most of us wake up every day, go to a job, do everything the same way over and over again. Really not fulfilled, but just knowing if I do this every day, I'm going to be able to pay my bills every month and I ain't going to have to sit up and be straining and struggling. I just want to get it done and get through this life. You were not put here solely to exist and survive. Your life has purpose. Your life has something in it that you're supposed to leave this world and make this world better. Your life is supposed to be impactful enough that you leave a legacy behind that will speak of you long after you're gone. If you don't have something in this world that you're doing is so impactful that when you're gone, people still know who you are. You are wasting what God has given you by way of gift and, and purpose. You got to change your approach. You got to make a move. You got to take action. The last thing you want to do is leave this world and leave your potential untapped. To me, that's the most painful thing I can imagine is to know I'm leaving this world and know I didn't do a fraction of what I was capable of because I was afraid. I can take the bumps and the bruises. I can take the pains, the setbacks, the disappointments, the delays. I can take all of that. What I can't take is sitting up knowing I'm leaving this world, having done what I was put here to do be a positive influence in the lives of others in whatever way that is. Touch lives. Show somebody, if nothing else, your life should show somebody else that no matter where you come from, it's possible. So I'm a, I have one question that I'm going to leave you with, and then I'm done. How bad do you want it? That's what it boils down to. How bad do you want it? Look, no matter what you do, you're going to have to make a commitment to do something greater. You're going to have to make a commitment to step out beyond what is comfortable. See, you can't create the things you need to be exceptional in the corner of comfort. It doesn't work that way. You're going to have to experience some adversity. Adversity is the fertile soil in which the seeds of faith are, faith are planted and cultivated. If you ain't experienced adversity, you really ain't really start living yet. Some one of the biggest parts of living to me is overcoming the obstacle, seeing the challenge set in front of me and going, watch this. Yeah, I know it's going to be tough when you walk in the gym. You know, you're not going to sit up there and be comfortable and get no real workout in and get any real results. You're going to have to be uncomfortable. You're going to be breathing hard. You're going to feel the burn. You're going to go through all that if you want to really, truly grow. You're going to experience it. There's no part in life where you get to grow and you don't experience the necessary discomfort that it takes to push yourself to the point of growth. Growth is an extreme result to extreme activity. You can't grow if you're not pushing yourself. So how bad do you want it? I'm going to leave that with you. For those of you who feel you may be in a point where you're ready to take a step, but you always seem to get bogged down because you can't take the step, you're procrastinating, check out the link in the box. I would love to work with you in my Breaking the Curse of uh, Procrastination course, specifically designed to get you to take the steps you need to take to make that move, to, to break the glass. Now, that's a whole nother world on the other side of that glass. It's a whole entire world on the other side of that glass. I want to get you there, but you got to want to get there. You got to want it bad enough that you're going to go through what's necessary to get there. On that note, I'm out of here. As I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. My challenge to you is to do the same. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Yeah, yeah.